Hello guys and gals, and welcome back to another episode of Haunted Gaming. This time we take a look at our first balloon fight creepypasta, ooh, called Balloon Fright. So take a seat, relax, and enjoy this balloon fight creepypasta. Remember the NES days, the days when Legend of Zelda took over the fans by many ratings and reviews? It was like we'd all been brainwashed into thinking that the future actually could look bright. Apart from thinking like a complete psychopath, I turned to another game. It was late at night, just turning around uh, 9 p.m. I didn't think any less of what people back then wanted. They all wanted the adventure games, games with unique styles, and a game that doesn't disappoint. Sadly, I was one of the few that failed to follow through with the craving for Legend of Zelda. I craved something a little more far-fetched from the Legend of Zelda games. I mean, come on. The game I decided to go with had been a cartridge with a sticker on it. Although the sticker didn't look like much, and didn't really wow me in any shape or form, I decided that this game will be what I play. I don't want to rethink anything, I just want it to be different from all the other fans. As I turned my left hand upside down, I looked at the palm and held the cartridge in a position so I could check for dust. Like many NES fans and people in general that owned one of these things, we all had to check for dust, so I didn't think anything else apart from checking for dust. With the moonlight still outside my window, I felt something had been watching me. It's a usual thought that would come into my head, not sure if it's common with humans or less common. I felt that having someone watch me is unique, although I felt terrified like any other night that would go by without a break sound. So as I began to get more paranoid with my surroundings, I slam dunked the cartridge into place. With the screen starting to buzz a little, I guess I knocked a wire too. As I sat back on the floor, wooden floor, with puffs of smoke coming from one of the old consoles I used to own, I felt that the room was foggy, until I looked back at the screen and focused on what was uh, important, the game. And that's when I started to get interested into the NES genre. As soon as I coughed a little, the game had loaded. Dark black with a stra significant strange looking font. I wanted to stare at it for a little longer. Anything that looked this good deserved some attention, right? With the controller in my hands, I pressed start. As the start button had faded away, I started to feel a little suspicious. Whether this was a normal reaction for a gamer playing a game that many weren't, I just wanted to know more about the game. Balloon Fight. A game that didn't seem to make much sense at first. I pushed random buttons and expected the game to play out like any other. And it didn't. It was a strange looking atmosphere. Pure black background that seemed to be sucking me in. Black hole, I suppose. Although this game had a lot going for it. At first the game didn't look too bad. Sure, it had a dark black screen that had horrified me for a little. It's just unusual seeing a pure black screen behind the character you're playing as. I finally got a grip and moved the character to the right. And seeing something strange like... A pixelated man with two balloons tied to his back. This looked really unique, although the position they were in looked sinister. Hanging by a few strings, it made me think a lot. These characters are dead. At first, it was just an accusation, so I realized that this game has nothing to make it feel lively. No moving backgrounds, just pure blackness around the screen. With a few colorful pixels characters floating on balloons. I sulked from the moment the game continues and started to show some signs of happy colors, saying that, how could I be so naive? It didn't look anything like happy colors, dark greenish rather, with a darker shade of brown underneath. And these were the platforms we could land on? It looked like a dark version of what must have been a happy place to be in. When you think of someone holding balloons, you usually see a smile or two, yet with this game the player looked emotionless. As I moved on to the next screen, I found something even more dull and sinister. There were more of these pixel-looking characters, I'd call it rip-off of Mario, yet the clothing revealed a little different in some areas. I stared into the black background as the other characters were now in focus by my two deceiving eyes. These characters looked dead, no face, just clothing and buttons attached to them. It was interesting to rethink why I'm playing this. When you think of Balloon Fight, I think of it more of a game with balloons and fighting, yet this game looked horrific, no signs of blood or gore. It was the atmosphere that got to me with that black background changing as next screen's load. I see several more stars. What? Now there are stars. This is starting to make a little more sense, don't you think? Without questioning why the stars were making sense, I looked more into the characters hanging by a few threads, lifeless and just looking down at the player. It looks so strange, as if heaven is above me at this point. I moved my character a little, expecting some kind of fight, and I didn't even get that. It was just a slow movement with floating pixel characters that certainly weren't alive, corpses hanging by strings attached to a single balloon. 
As I thought the game couldn't get any more emotional, I found myself corrected by the next screens to come. The screen was strange. It had water at the bottom, like most of the screens, yet the design looked completely different. It was as if this game had been passed on several times to different level designers who wanted to make the game feel more unique. I dived deeper into this darkness and found something that startled me for a few minutes. There was no sign of this anywhere else in the game, yet I found it. A strange looking orange piranha looking creature with sharp teeth. What really got me was how this creature was alive. How this creature had more details than any of the other characters in the game except the player. The player had two eyes, but that was it. More characters had started to fade and return. This looked more like space. Yet being in space would mean immediate death, right? Then again, <laughs> how can I question the logic in this game? Hmm? Nevertheless, I questioned the logic completely. I even moved on to rethink on why there's thousands of corpses hanging by balloons and water at the bottom of the screens. And what made this orange looking creature with sharp teeth feel needed to chomp on the player. As I died, it was crueler than I had thought. Death by the sharp teeth piranha? I never felt so down playing a game, yet this game made me feel different. With the dark atmosphere and character floating with no faces and some having green skin, I started to understand what dark Gothic plots are behind all this. Green skin? Could this be the suffering of the ones who were sent up into space? It's just a guess. I pretend that most of these bodies floating were all alive once. Finally, the game over screen flashed on my screen. Game over, that's all it said. I looked closer into the flashing screen and could see some kind of screen. A mysterious screen that I must have missed. Beyond the darkness was that orange beast. And I could just see some balloons fading away along with some of the lifeless bodies slowly falling like a feather. What the heck is going on? I shouted. I wanted to know why this is happening. Why is this game so dark? Asking myself several questions on why this game was dark and whether I should continue playing it, I stopped playing it after the game over screen. It was too much to handle. Like many gamers out there, I was curious on what this game's plot lines were. The story was more important to me than the gameplay. With a notepad in my hand, I drew my theories with sketches of these characters, and my mind told me that these drawings needed faces. They need some kind of life in them. I didn't stop to think why they needed faces, it just felt right. So I left them with faces, and some of them having smiles, since balloons should make you happy, not sad. I hung the drawings up on my wall and looked at them as the game faded off screen. Turning the game off was the right move to make in my opinion, it was the right thing to do. Why would the darkness have to take me too? I don't want to end up as a zombie with no brain. I don't want to feel dull for the rest of my life. However, sharing my experience with the world would be a solution. It would make everyone think twice about life in general. And this game didn't make me feel happy a single bit. Yet it did make me think a lot. It made me retrace memories of the older games I used to play. It made me think of all these games out there now. They're all stuck with hidden meanings and some might even dive into a darker atmosphere and then balloon f, f fright I mean, I mean fight, sorry. It's not worth returning to space and suffering like those in there. I want to breathe the fresh air around me instead of facing complete death and having to look down on another player making the same mistakes. Well, that was different. It looked like it was just detail in the game, wasn't it? No evil demons or entities or a hack infesting it. It was really just the game itself with a morbid look at its content. Now, I've played Balloon Fight as a kid and reading some of the stuff, I really couldn't recollect that well. So, you know, after playing it again recently and then looking at gameplay online from others, it really was just the game, but looked on in a dark way, which was actually refreshing to see rather than just hacks for once. The idea that the characters looked lifeless was a tad weird to me as the sprites looked rather alive and happy even. Maybe this was written for an age before high definition and graphics weren't under intense scrutiny as they are nowadays, but the details existed to me, so it was most likely just a perception issue as a whole. And I found it to be nice, but, you know, there were parts where, I guess, the way it was described didn't really hit me, because some of the descriptions here didn't really match up to what I thought well, a balloon fight could really be described as. It was more abstract, if you could say. So, you know, moving on, it was fine for its length, and it didn't feel like it dragged itself out, and it got its points across, and it got it across, you know, fluidly and, you know, giving as much information as necessary, rather than, you know, making me almost want to scroll down even further. Now, what I do really like is the ending, and although it's not as animated as, say, some other creepypastas, it allows you to not only think during the uh, second act when the game is being described about this whole, you know, outlook on the game, but ease out of the story in the end. The player didn't go crazy in the end. No. 
It left us on a thoughtful note focusing on the game itself and what the latent meaning could be. It was a normal ending. The player reacted in a normal fashion. Uh, the reactions, too, again, I might add, are normal reactions. I mean, these are reactions that I can see myself reacting to put in such a, you know, scenario. It was a nice creepypasta, and I enjoyed it. Go check it out. I'll leave the link in the description below, and let me know in the comments below what you thought of it, and what would you rate it, and what would you change to make it better. This has been another episode of Haunted Gaming, and if you like what you saw, then like, comment, and subscribe. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.